It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, this is Red Eye Radio. Hello and welcome. He is Gary McNamara. I'm Eric Harley. Welcome to the aftermath. Wow. Let's start out uh, with... A couple of uh, audio cuts, and it's probably all that we need to play all, all audio cuts of the of the debate, except for the golf part uh, uh, of it. But uh, these are the these are two examples of the kind of the thing uh, the 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 kind of moments mm. uh, that happened that caused the reaction and the panic that you see in Democrats tonight. Make sure that all those things we need to do child care. Elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump. Well, he's right. He did beat Medicaid. Beat it. Wow. Yeah. Basically, beat it to the uh, uh, the the ground. Here's another moment. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by a, by a, by an immigrant coming in. To, they talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women to be raped by their by their in-laws, by their by by their spouses brothers and sisters by just it's just, it's just ridiculous and they can do nothing about it and they try to arrest them when they cross state lines thank you there have been many young women murdered by the same people he allows to come across our border we have a border that's the most dangerous place anywhere in the world consider the most dangerous place anywhere in the world and he opened it up and these killers are coming into our country okay that audio cut cnn edited mm. Because yeah. he said, I don't think Biden knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I don't even think he knows what he said. Mm-hmm. I just picked that out. I was listening to other audio cuts, and I figured they would be all the same, and that wasn't. They right. edited that, right. that out of it. Yeah. And that was that was a key moment. L- this is the first debate that I've ever covered. And I've been covering, uh, you know, debates in the media for over 40 years. Warren Harding, that was, was that the first? Uh, it no. it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It was Eisenhower. What? <laughs> uh, it's it doesn't matter what I think or you think. Doesn't matter nope. what. It doesn't matter. Nope. Please understand where I'm going here. Doesn't matter what any of our listeners think. Any nope. of our great listeners doesn't matter what you think. The uh, we're the station that cares. Yeah. All that matters is what's going on with Democrats. That's the only thing that matters. Doesn't matter. The fact checking doesn't matter. You and I talked about that. We went, nope, fact checking doesn't matter at all. Said it the other night when you were gone. It would be the story that there's an implosion. That's the story. That's the story. There's nothing else. That, nothing else matters. Yeah, the you, issues, none of it because... You and I going through it, uh, it, it, the liberal reaction. Here's a liberal media re- reaction. Here's the top headline of the Washington Post. Biden struggles. Trump deflects questions. Politico. Democrats consider the unthinkable. It's time for Biden to go. The New York Times. Biden struggles as Trump blusters in contentious debate. They're trying to bring Trump into it. Oh, they both did very badly. But they all started with what everybody has been seeing for far too long. This is stupid that we're still having this conversation. Yeah, you and I were just right before we went on the air. Democrats are shocked and confused. No, you're not. No. No, you're not. (laughs) You have been seeing it. And... If you're shot, if you're truly shocked and confused, you're such a bad liar. You're such a liar. You lie to yourself. Yeah. If you're a Democrat 
If you're a liberal, and this is shocking and confusing, you'll go to you'll go to no end to lie because you're lying to yourself. If you'll lie to yourself, man, I don't know who you'll tell the truth to. Uh, I've been sitting over here. You and I were talking, but all I've been doing is going through all the different audio cuts and analysis of the mainstream media and liberal Democrats that are as liberal as you can possibly get. I want to start out with uh, uh, Cenk Uger from, uh, you know, the Young Turks. Who debated him that one time? And he got smoked. Was it Jordan Peterson? No. Who Mm. was it? Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, he's he's as whacked out left as you can get. But... Sorry, <laughs> I'm apologizing. I never thought I'd say this. I agree with Jenk Uger. And the whole time the split screen is killing Biden. Yep. Because he's got his mouth open, he looks confused, doesn't know where he is. He's lost his train of thought at least twice in like disastrous shape. Those are going to be played a billion times in viral video after viral video. So this is an epic disaster. It like I see uh, people online saying, "Well, okay, that answer wasn't so bad." No, it does. Any particular answer doesn't matter at all. This thing is over. He looks like he's barely surviving. I don't mean the debate. I mean life. No, it's I. My question after the first few minutes of the debate was, "Who's going to run the country until January 20th? I thought the same thing. Forget about the election. Forget about him being a candidate. I, now the Democrats know. Now, now they're let's just say this. Now they're admitting. Uh, what was the what was the other uh, sub headline from the New York Times? One of the other one of the other headlines, top headlines. Democrat Democrats talk about replacing Biden on the ticket. I said the other night it wasn't going to be about Trump. It's not going to be, even be about fact checking. It's going to be about biden it's going to be about the implosion it's going to be about what we saw you know i was looking at some of the you know the the early in the debate when the fact checking started i went doesn't matter no fact checking i, I the, yeah I nobody can't, cares i i can't believe it but when i was driving in i said what i think i don't need to even be in here tonight all i've got to do is play the mainstream media and the left Are you ready? Here's Nicole Wallace from MSNBC. Mm. Here we go. And there is a conversation happening um, inside Biden's circle and certainly a much more frank conversation happening inside the Democratic coalition. And I think there will be stories of a lot of concern about the performance tonight. And I think what... When you say conversations happening, what do you mean? I think people are talking... I think the conversations range from whether he should be in this race tomorrow morning to what was wrong with him. I mean, he has a cold... He has a cold. He has a cold. <laughs> uh, let's go to. I, I I may never say this again. I I I don't know what to uh, to do here. I I uh, agree with Chuck Todd. <laughs> wow, it's come to that. That's how bad it is. <laughs> That's go. how bad it is. Here we go. You know, one of the things was, would either candidate look like the caricature that the other campaign has been trying to paint of him? And at the end of the day, Joe Biden looks like the caricature that that conservative media has been painting. Uh, and there were no clips tonight. Right. This was you saw it before your eyes. Look, I, I'm I don't want to just tell you what I think here, um, Tom. I, I've been talking to a lot of leaders in the Democratic Party, electeds, um, coalition leaders. There's a full on panic about this performance, Um, not like, oh, this is recoverable. It it is more of a, okay, um, he's got to step aside. There's a lot of that chatter. Um, This is this is about as bad of a of a performance in order to uh, that Biden could have delivered uh, in if his goal was to try to sort of calm the waters. Uh, one thing here where you said, you know, that uh, both parties were, were you know, you, you're trying to paint the caricature. We were never painting a caricature of Biden. No. That Biden fit the caricature. No. No. 
Biden simply fit what we knew and what we have witnessed and what we have seen every day for the past couple of years. That's a great point, because a caricature is is an exaggeration. Yeah. It, it is exaggerating the features of the individual, and that's not what was going on. So that's where I would disagree with him. I, I want to play this here because this was just... Uh, This was just unbelievable. This is after the debate, and it's Jill Biden. Mm. It's Jill with Mm -hmm. Joe. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to play it. Uh, I'll I'll put it on. um, Yeah, I can put it. I'm sitting. I'm I'm playing it from Twitter, so I can I can put it on my on uh, my my Twitter page at Mm. uh, at Gary Red Eye One here, and then uh, you can copy it too Mm -hmm. but this is jill biden afterwards and you have to see the video but it's important she's treating him like he's somebody who just got a good report card who was a child right i'm serious i mean there's no other way you can look at this it's bad and 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 here we go all right joe you did such a great job you answered every question you knew all the When you see the way that he looks, it's like she's instructing a child. And this, did you see the cell phone footage after the debate of her taking Joe Biden down the steps? Yeah, it was it's, it was bad. It's how it's, you know, my father has very bad stenosis of the back. Right. But it's it's how we would help. Our father down steps. Your father is, what, 17 years older than Biden? Yes, 98 years old. Uh, let me just, uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll uh, put this here uh, on uh, on our Twitter page. Yeah, um, I'll repost it when you do. Uh, during, the, during the break here. But it's it just, you have to see the video, and they think this is working. Now, we've got a lot to explore. What happens now? I, Joe I, Biden has 99.9% of the committed delegates. And, and one of the things is on, they were talking about MSNBC and CNN. They're looking at the rules. They're trying to find out how do you get rid of Joe unless Joe wants to step down. I was wh- saying this what, the other night. What do you do? I don't know what it looks like for Joe to not be the candidate. For them to replace Joe, number one, Joe has to step down. Otherwise, they've got to take a massive action. As a party. And one of those two has to happen. Or or I also floated this idea, which I said, well, I suspect they'll get up Friday morning. They'll get out the duct tape and the super glue, and they're going to weekend at Bernie's this thing until November 5th. Those are your options. And we all see it. It's over. The discussion about Joe Biden's ability is done. Yeah, there's no debate anymore. Understand, though, everybody has been lying on the Democrat side. And now the question's coming up. And I think you're going to see this in Democrat circles, Mm. especially with Jill Biden, Jill Biden helping him down. And then that that scene with Jill Biden doing it, the family. Yeah, you know, you talk about you and Democrats are not going to say what conser- Well, Democrats are saying what conservatives have said all along, mm-hmm. and Democrats, re- conservative Republicans, whatever, conservatives, Republicans, moderate Republicans, whatever. But Democrats are now saying exactly what the Republicans have been saying that the that the the White House and I think most Democrats, probably ninety five to ninety nine percent of Democrats, have have said. Yeah, all the stuff that Republicans are showing you are cheap fakes and deep fakes. Right. All a lie. Right. All a lie from the Democrats and from the Biden administration. But I think they're going to say, what the hell's going on with the family and and Jill Biden? You're going to hear this from Democrats now. Why would they allow, why would the family allow him to get to this point? I I said that going out the door, uh, heading to work to my wife. I put this squarely on Jill Biden's shoulders. Jill Biden is the one... That could have prevented all of this from happening. And my question for her would be, 
Are you, do you even care about your husband? I know you don't yeah. care about this country. We can put that aside. But don't ever call yourself a caretaker when you allow something like this to get this far. This is reprehensible. I've never seen that in my life as a caretaker myself. 86690-RED-EYE. This report is brought to you by Shell Rotella. With advanced synthetic technology, is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Every driver knows the cost of replacing tires is a major expense. What if you could save on tire costs without sacrificing performance or safety? Consider retreads, a sustainable, cost-effective way to rack up your miles. When talking retreads, sometimes there's worry when it comes to wear. But just because the tread is worn on a tire doesn't mean the casing is. Quality casings can far outlive their original tread. And once they're on your vehicle, the tread on a retread can last just as long or longer than the tread on a new tire. The key to preserving casings, whether new or retreaded, is regular tire maintenance checks. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's our Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. I want to uh, go to this is uh, CNN's uh, some of their analysis, uh, and this is uh, Scott Jennings. He is a uh, Republican analyst, just so you know. But mm-hmm. uh, what he said is what we just said. Yeah. I'm told for weeks, weeks by Democrats who say, "Oh, in private meetings, I've seen Joe Biden uh, do cartwheels and handstands while doing trigonometry while solving all the nation's problems." We now know that every single person who said that has been lying to the American people. And let's go back. I just want to go back because we pounded uh, Joe Scarborough, the former uh, Republican who is now just on the lunatic fringe of the left. He is, uh, uh, as you know, the the host of Morning Joe. Remember what he said just a few weeks ago? Mm. Because you and I talked about it. Here Mm -hmm. we go. Start your tape right now because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of of Biden is the best Biden ever. Wow. The arrogance and defiance. Wow. I I don't know that I've seen a horse that high. <laughs> then again, I haven't smoked today's weed. Uh, it's not the horse that's high. It's it's Joe Scarborough. And we'll get to uh you know the first Audio cut I saw was it was uh, well, the video because it's audio because we're on radio. But I saw it on on Twitter. It was Joy Reid, yeah. And I went, I don't need to go any further. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's, it's it's look at the it's, headline. It's go, over. Go to any of the liberal media websites. They it. I'm telling you right now, it is chaos. And and here's what I suspect. Jill Biden and the president are, you know, wherever they are, holed up at the White House, and everybody else in the campaign is, you know, bar the doors, but asking each other, what do we do? What do we do? Well, you know, Glenn Greenwald just tweeted a little while ago, uh, basically the same thing we've been saying. You know, everybody's talking about him stepping down. Well, he would have to want to step down. And what are you going to do? You're going to force him out. And and then what would you do? You put some, you're going to leapfrog somebody in front of Kamala Harris. You can't do that. You, you, the Democrats aren't going to agree. I mean, the 25th amendment. Right. They're right. Not, they're not. Right. Because the, the, Th- admission, that's not is, gonna the admission is at that point. Exactly. We have been lying to you for the last couple of years. Yep. And have had a president that is not capable of being president as president, and yep. we've lied to the American public. Yep. Take that and run with that, Trump, whoever decides to replace Biden if that happens. You're listening to Red Eye Radio. 
from the Uniden America Studios. In Twilight Radio, he's Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. The only opinion that matters right now are the Democrat opinions. <laughs> I, it's There is no fact-checking. Nobody cares about anything that no. was said. No. It was about performance. I'm looking at all the fact check. These are the, in fact, CNN pounding on Biden fact checking. Yeah. Uh, at least on Twitter they are. And, it, well, well, I mean, they, they did it on, it, it's on Twitter, but it was from the actual analysis afterwards. Right. But I went, that doesn't even matter. None of it matters. This isn't, this like is the first time in myself over 40 years covering debates of presidents where none of that matters. By the way, one of the, one of the stories at the top of the Washington Post right now CNN moderators didn't fact check. Not everyone is happy about it. They were basically saying they should have done it on the fly. Who was it also that said, I think it was the New York Times uh, in their live analysis that was basically saying, oh, here it is. Uh, This was part of their, uh, it wasn't live analysis, it was afterward, but uh, basically their thread that they did that that ran also ran during the uh, debate. Here it is. Dana Bash and Jake Tapper let the candidates be the stars of the show. The microphones were muted. So were the moderators. And it's like now the liberals are going, well, why didn't you guys step in? Why didn't you fact check them? Well, what does that look like? I talked about this the other morning when you were gone. What do you have to finish Joe Biden's sentences? You have to go to a break. What do you have to do? What do you do in that moment? Because if you go to a break, if they, if they were to have gone to a break, then the debate at that point is over. But honestly, the moment, it, the first few minutes of that debate, it fell apart. It was over. It wasn't at that point a debate anymore. We said it yesterday. Listen, if you're talking to former President Trump, it's about the contrast. All you have to do is be up there, um, you know, keep your tone level. You were saying during the break, you could. You could see his tone was level, uh, whether yeah. he was listening to advice of people that were saying that. Thank you for listening to Red Eye Radio, Mr. President. And the, you know, it, it, all the others in the media that were saying, you know, just a level tone. But we said it's going to be about the contrast. That's what it is. The, the issues are already there. They already know the issues. People know the issues. Anybody who's concerned about what's going on in this, in, in this country already knows it. It's going to be about the contrast in performance between the two, and that's exactly what it was. Let me play, uh, uh, let's, let us play more of the audio cuts. It's us. I mean, I'm pushing the button, so it's, I don't yeah. want to make it sound like it's all about well, I'll tell me. you, I struggled the other morning or, when you were gone. It was like, wait, wait a minute, where's that audio cut? Where's that audio cut? Because I actually pushed that button for yeah. the audio cut. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, not only am I a talk show host, you're, I'm... your co-producer. I'm the... I'm the technical audio engineer, the audio technical engineer. Yeah. I push, I click on a yeah, mouse. You click. <laughs> it's hard to do. But here it is. I don't know what to do except because what I think doesn't matter. Right. What matters is what the mainstream media, the liberal mainstream media is thinking. Right. And Democrats. This is CBS News. And uh, Ed O'Keefe gives uh, part of his opinion in their panel discussion. You know, voters were watching this. Republicans were watching this. Independents who haven't decided. And then Democrats and Democratic lawmakers. What are officials who hold office in the Democratic Party saying tonight about President Biden's performance? There are at least some House Democrats who were gathered tonight watching this together, talking about talking to the White House about having him step down. That's how bad it was in their view. Remember... House Democrats are on the verge of trying to get back the majority. They're nervous about doing that in places in these battleground states where they're going to need a strong top of the ticket. They may need to rely on a strong Senate or gubernatorial candidate. And in some cases, they don't have it. Mm-hmm. Step down so before may- the convention? Well, it will at least throw up somebody else instead of the president that, uh, that debated tonight. Um, I just want to be clear been, about told- this reporting because 
you know, there are more than 200 House Democrats. Right. Mm -hmm. So are these, when you say a group, are these three House Democrats who may be progressive and are angry with Biden about the war in Israel? Are they leadership? Who are, because there's a lot of Democrats, just like there are a lot of Republicans. <laughs> 435 yeah, members are elected House. House Democrats. Uh, some in safe districts, others not. And as one of these House Democrats is telling me by text, I've never seen a freak out like this mm -hmm. before. We've heard the conversations, right? We've heard it for years. He's too old. He shouldn't be doing this now tonight. There are at least conversations about taking more aggressive action. Well, uh, w which ones? Uh, which 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 Democrat? Can you, uh, can you name some? Which, uh, uh, it's um um it's over. Uh, here is on uh, CNN Anderson Cooper uh, with John King. Yeah, okay, here we go. Political elites and the American people. Be nice to see what the voters say. But I can tell you, it started minutes in. It started with the first couple of answers, and it has continued throughout the night from a, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, to what do we do about this? I, and it involves very senior people in the Democratic Party, including elected officials, saying we have a problem. And just to co-sign what John is saying, I mean, the panic that I am hearing from Democrats is not like anything that I have heard. In the there you go. That's on. That was uh, some of the CNN uh, analysis on it. I want to get, because I keep promising Jory Reid, you know, you know, the problem is right now, there's so much negative analysis coming from the mainstream media. I can't keep up with it. No, it's it. It is just pouring onto yeah. social media. Yeah, it's uh, here is uh, here's Joy Reid. This was the first analysis that I saw, and I went, "Oh, it's uh, over." Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 You're you, right. You re I yeah. I didn't have to go. I was like, "Well, am all I going to do is play Joy Reid over and over again, like on a loop?" Right throughout the show. Now, anybody right. knows Joy Reid. She is a the mo She is probably in the most premier position that any liberal can be in as one of the you know lead hosts of and and, and getting more uh, as we know. Uh, I guess reporting on her mm -hmm. than anybody else, and she is as delusional of a liberal as you could possibly imagine. Defending Biden. Hell or yeah. high water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And here's what she had to say. I, too, was on the phone throughout much of the debate um, with um, Obama world people, with Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives, with campaign operatives. My phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, the people who were texting with me were... Um, very concerned um, about uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble, seeming extremely weak. And, you know, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. President Biden had one job tonight and it was it, it one primary job. And yes, it was to litigate Donald Trump's, you know, criminality and, and all of those things. But he had to settle his own party. Mm -hmm. He needed to settle Democrats. Democrats, you know, they always talk about Democrats are bedwetters and Democrats are always panicking. Yes, Democrats are always panicking. They're always scared. You, right. They're always thinking they're going to lose. Like Democrats are, are very pessimistic. They're, they, this is just neurotic. who they are. They're neurotic. But Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this. I have four more years in me. I have the ability uh, and the stamina and the strength to do four more years. He did not do that. He did the opposite of that. He made them more panicked. Mm -hmm. The people who were texting me were even more panicked. They actually expected it to be better than it was. And now they're in a I won't say a full-fledged panic, but it's getting there. And are the are people that you're talking to who are expressing these concerns, are these people who are involved in democratic politics or yes. are these liberals watching TV? This is not liberals watching TV. These are these are campaign people. Mm -hmm. These are people who are either democratic operatives. These are people who are former, you know, sort of Obama, Obama World Administration people. These are people who are in the business. Okay. So the, the civilians are also panicking. Uh, they're also <laughs> texting me, but I was trying to kind of ignore the civilians and really talk to the campaign folks. Um, people are... Um, they're worried and there is, you know, it's not a, a full drumbeat yet, but there is talk of, look, here's the thing. We know, I, I know a lot of politicians. I just happen to know a lot of them yeah. at a lot of levels. They all believe that they have a unique ability to run the race 
that they passionately want to run. And I know for a fact that Joe Biden passionately believes that he is the only person who can beat Donald Trump. And he has evidence of it because he did it before. Right. He knows that he has certain demographic strengths that Donald Trump cannot counter. He is the real working class white guy that's actually Donald Trump's base. So he knows how to talk to them. He, he believes <laughs> that he is the only person that can do it. The problem is after tonight, his party doesn't believe that. Well, she's delusional right there. Yeah, it, Biden is still Bi- trying to. Bi- Biden is one of the reasons yeah. that they've lost the working person. It, it, exactly. I mean, that, exactly. I mean, her delusion comes out in right. that. But look, which, there is, which, by the way, is a great audio cut to play because it shows on full display how delusional she is. But even at the end, yeah, but it's over. Well, well I like when she said, I've talked to a lot of people, world people. Yeah. Who are world, world people? people? She, 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 she said that, world I people. Not, I think. Not well, not stupid United States people. I talk to world people. Now, we know there's going to be a backlash <laughs> on this. There's going to be Democrats saying, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We need to we need to hold up here. Let's not be that critical. Here's Bakari Sellers. I know he's been on MSNBC before. I think, uh, what, he's a South Carolina, former uh, South Carolina, um, uh, uh, not representative, but uh, uh, state uh, mm-hmm. repre- state representative. Mm-hmm. Biden ain't going nowhere. It's June. Let go of your pearls and dry your bed. He lost a debate. Bad. But it's June. You're not replacing him. So leave your random combinations in your chats. Uh-huh. You're not nominating Gretch. I think it was Gretchen Whitner or Gavin mm-hmm. over Kamala. Stop it. Organize vote. We are winning every single swing state Senate race uh-huh. and gubernatorial race. Right. Relax. Choices Trump, Biden, or the couch. I choose Joe. Here's ABC. ABC News, President Joe Biden's decision to debate former President Trump early on was widely perceived as an effort to change the narrative in a race dominated by concerns over his age. His performance Thursday instead only amplified those worries. That's the liberal ABC News, which in a few hours is going to start Good Morning America, which... For the weekend now, going into the weekend, and from here until November 5th, regarding the election. Actually, regarding everything, because he's currently the president, this is the discussion. And in terms of polls, it's going to be about the polls before the debate and the polls after you know we're going on vacation i'm not going to be able to go on vacation uh, no no i mean you know what so we get no, some... i mean i'll be on vacation well, but i, I mean know, I... but yeah we can't we can't vacate yeah oh, wait, that's probably the wrong word uh the <laughs> probably not the word i was gonna i just i'm i'm not it's so we get a, cu- a couple of our great listeners um who wrote us and and said uh uh, Cody writes, uh, usually something big happens when you guys go on vacation after tonight's debate performance. Jeez. I wouldn't be surprised if something big happens next week when you guys are on vacation. Cody, why do you have to be so honest? Because I wouldn't. And, and in fact, uh, Linda, uh, one of our, our great longtime listeners, now normally when you guys uh, would be on vacation and, you know, um, and and we'd have to wait for you guys insights for, you know, something like this. Tonight's disaster, she says, uh, after the debate. And then she also uh, posted the link to Joe Biden helping him off stage. And it's, you know, our audience knows it, it does happen. It, it's we we head out for vacation. Then all of a sudden, you know, something big drops. Well, could there be an announcement Friday morning? I don't expect anything no. to be announced Friday morning because, no. first of all, in order to announce something, you're going to have to have a plan. If if they were to announce it on Friday, they would have to have the plan. Uh, Fox News, by the way, was asking, kind of trolling Gavin Newsom at the debate. You know, and he's, his answer was what you think, it, in fact, what it should be, and that is Joe Biden is the nominee. Yeah, we'll hear from I've got some audio from Gavin. And 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 we need to point out something you point out uh, when people bring up his name, and that is he pulls far lower than Kamala Harris. Yep. Why Why him? 
Why are you guys going for the white guy? What's wrong with you? He's You go for the white guy who's polling lower. How dare you? But how do you, this is sort of, it, well, we'll get to more coming up. <laughs> we can't fit it Sorry. all in. I know. I'm We're like, late for a break. I'm forgetting I'm doing a radio show. Yeah. It's just, I got all these all this audio. By the way, thanks to the listeners for saying you're looking for our insight. I don't have any insight. It's, You've heard my the insight. This all is the, in, the story. All the insight is from the mainstream media yep. the, and liberal Democrats. Yep. 866 red eye We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Coming up on the top of uh, the hour, more audio and then what happens next? You know, what are the yeah. what are the possibilities? You know, is it coming out that delegates are legally obligated to vote, you know, are committed to Biden? Yeah. And they cannot change their vote unless Biden says do it. Right. And he... We have I, no indication. He's, no I don't indication think he's going to do that. that. No. Top of the hour news is brought to you by House Products. Visit houseproducts.com. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley and I'm Gary McNamara. Good morning. Welcome. Well, the debate last night, forget about fact checks, forget about any analysis from uh, us on the, the issues out there. Uh, It was all about uh, Biden's uh, disastrous performance, and it's not what we think. It's not what you think. It's what the Democrats think right now and what the mainstream media is thinking right now, Mm -hmm. and they're panicking. Just looking at some of the headlines, Biden stumbles amid fierce attacks from Trump. Yeah, that's the L.A. Times. Yeah. Dems media freak out over debate. Biden is toast, Politico. A fumbling performance and a panicking party, New York Times, Congress, uh, uh, Congress, Democrats, congressional Democrats in a state of shock. That's from Axios. Uh, Biden gives unsteady performance. Trump keeps to script. Yeah. Yeah. Democrats freak out. Biden is toast. Time for an open convention. Oh, I got to look at this. Normally... I don't pay attention to the betting odds because remember the betting odds in, in uh, September of uh, 2016, Hillary was what? 90% chance of right. beating Trump. So. Plus I'm the gambler in the family. So, yeah. but I, I did want to see, <laughs> okay. I did want to see the, these are, um, cause the, the headline says, uh, latest betting odds, Biden plummets following debate with Trump. Let me see what's the latest yeah. now. Okay, is this? Uh, I, I, these are all. These are all post debate. I think I don't know if they are. I can't tell. Uh, Bet online. Trump fifty seven. Biden twenty two. Fifty one sixteen. Sixty twenty. Fifty seven eighteen. Fifty three twenty six. Fifty one thirty one. Well, you know, <laughs> it's it, it's. Uh, I I think those odds. Again, I don't look at those odds. Uh, if I'm going to gamble my money away, I do it without looking at, at uh, statistics. <laughs> but I'll say, and 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 quite frankly, those odds are, it's sentiment, it's like an online poll, maybe even worse. The fact of the matter is, though, the actual polls, likely voter polls, post-debate. Now, people are wondering, will there be another debate? Maybe, but only if Hillary agrees to debate Trump. (laughs) 
I don't. Yeah. We for we were saying, and and it was as late as I think last week. Uh, by the way, is you, there going to be a debate? You just reminded me of something. Axelrod said, I think it was on CNN. Mm-hmm. Axelrod said that, uh, you know, that Trump will get crushed if Biden's replaced. I'm like, whoa, boy, that's a change in narrative, wow. isn't it? I'm like, wow. You know, if we only had a better, much better candidate, it went from he's the only, still the only guy who can beat Trump to, yeah, but if we had someone, uh, anyone but Biden, Trump would get crushed. It's it is the reality, and and it's why you and I asked uh, as late as last week: Is the debate still going to happen? It, we don't. I, I don't need uh, anything else except for what I have seen with Biden to know that he was never going to survive ninety minutes. He didn't survive five to ten minutes. Well, that I remember the first thing we said. And I didn't know where you were going that night. And this was off the air. You came in and you said, 90 minutes? And what? He goes, the debate, 90 minutes? Well, yeah. Biden can't do 90 minutes. Is, yeah, Biden can't do a half hour. There's no way you, you can't do. And he couldn't. And, and he couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't get through a quarter hour. And so now you've got a situation where the party is stuck with Biden. The Democratic Party, Joe Biden is the nominee. Because I'll say this, prove me wrong. And what I mean by that is go through the steps that it would require. Because Joe Biden is not about to do it. So unless you do, unless the Democrats get on board for the whole 25th Amendment thing, which ain't going to happen, he's not going anywhere. Oh, yeah, because I, you know, some uh, some of our listeners, well, the 25th, the Democrats going to do the 25th. No, they're not. That's not. That's that's even worse now than what they're doing right now. That would be even right. worse because because right. you you would have right. to. You're talking about. Oh my God, he's not fit for office now. Uh, not it, it, because even even after the debate, it was well. We just don't think that he's going to be a good candidate. He's not a good president. The number one concern is he's the commander in chief right yeah. now. And that's that's something that that, of course, has hit on me this this entire time. Forget about, you know, and and, and when you had the special counsel her come out and say that, uh, you know, he doesn't have he doesn't have it to stand trial. Right. Well, we said if he doesn't have it to stand trial, then he doesn't have it. You know, he, he doesn't have it to be president of the United States. Right. And now I think that you're going to have some Democrats come out and start talking about that, though. I don't think they would go as far as a 25th Amendment, because then history would look at the last couple of years and say the entire Biden administration was a lie. The other thing is what you got to realize with Biden is, and the Biden people around him, and I'm talking about his family, yep. they feel completely and totally burned Yep, the fact that he was passed over in, in uh, 2016 oh, and, yeah. Hillary, yeah. and Hillary got yeah. it. You know, understand this is his this is his destiny. He believes he he down he believes down to his soul that he is the only person who can beat Trump because he beat him already. Right. That's how he's thinking. Right. I beat him already. I can beat him again. And forget about his cognitive abilities. His family thinks the same thing. Right. Yep. And that's the problem that he has because they've let him go this far. And it's not look when we play the 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 audio cuts, our laughter comes from the reaction of the delusional Democrats and his family and others trying to gaslight us and tell us that what are you talking about? He's the sharpest guy you could possibly ever imagine. This, this is guy about, runs yes. circles around us. He as he does backflips. Yeah, and uh, you know there he is. You know, b- before he sits down for breakfast, he does an hour on the uneven parallel bars. You guys don't see a lot of it because he's too busy being mentally competent. And, yeah. All lies. I, it's, you know, and and Scarborough, F you if you can't handle the truth. Okay, Joe. All right. Wow. Listen, when Mika hands you that script, maybe you should just suggest toning it down a little bit because... You really, 
now are going to have to eat those words. Let's. I want to play it again just so people understand because yeah. now it's clear. Everybody knows there's a problem. Yeah. And we want to go back just a little over a month ago. Yeah. Uh, we played it last hour, but it's worth playing again. Mm-hmm. Joe Scarborough on MSNBC. And we do this because the number one liberal outlet in the United States is MSNBC. Until right. there's yeah. nobody that, that comes close to right. them. Yeah. And this is how delusional. This is, the, this is the lie that somebody like Joe Scarborough was trying to sell you. Here we go. I think he's better than he's ever been intellectually. Um, analytically, because he's been around for 50 years. And, you know, I don't know if people know this or not. Biden used to be a hothead. <laughs> Sometimes that Irishman would get in front of the reasoning. Sometimes he would say things he didn't want to say. This is and, and, and I don't really you know what? I don't really care. start your tape right now because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. Not a close second. And I've known him for years. The Brzezinski's have known him for 50 years. If it weren't the truth, I wouldn't say it. (laughs) This is the pathological line of the left. It's just embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for him. Is Scarborough going to walk it back in the morning? Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. What do you start with if you're Joe Scarborough? I, I Here's what you start with. You start with Mika starting the opening the show saying, Joe Scarborough has the day off. <laughs> Be back with us at some nah, point. No, he'll double down on it. Uh, he'll double down. Oh, I, uh, I hope he does. Now, now, this is Anderson Cooper. With Kamala Harris and the pounding on Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris yesterday. This is just, and, and her admission, by the way. This is, mm-hmm. this is, here we go. John King has described a panic inside the Democratic Party right now because of President Biden's performance in tonight's debate. He's been hearing from Democratic lawmakers and others around the country. Um, some within your own party are, are wondering if President Biden should even step aside. What do you say to that? Listen, first of all, what we saw tonight is the president making a very clear contrast with Donald Trump on all of the issues that matter to the American people. Yes, there was a slow start, but it was a strong finish. And what became very clear through the course of the night is that Joe Biden is fighting on behalf of the American people on substance, on policy, on performance. Joe Biden is extraordinarily strong. And but that, I'm sorry, that on substance and debated. policy and performance tonight, I mean, his, the president's performance tonight clearly was disappointing for his supporters. CNN is reporting Democratic lawmakers watching the debate were worried, uh, worried about the president's performance. One said it was a, a disaster. Another called it a train wreck. Those are Democrats especially worried that Biden did not punch back on Trump's lies. Listen, people can debate on style points, but ultimately this election and who is the president of the United States has to be about substance. And the contrast is clear. Look at what happened during the course of the debate. Donald Trump lied over and over and over again, as he is wont to do. He would not disavow what happened on January 6th. He would not give a clear answer on whether he would stand by the election results this November. He went back and forth about where he stands on one of the most critical issues of freedom in America, which is the right of a woman to make decisions about their own body. He has been completely ambiguous and all over the place about where he stands on that issue, despite the fact that he hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And that's exactly what they did. And just three years ago, we commemorated the two year anniversary of Dobbs, wherein women across our country have been denied emergency health care. All all that may be true. All that may be true. (laughs) But the president of the United States was not able to to put make that case to Donald Trump on the stage tonight. I mean, you debated against then Vice President Trump, uh, excuse me, Vice President Biden four years ago. And 
he was a very different person on the stage four years ago when when you debated him. You must. I mean, that that's certainly true, is it not? Anderson, by the way, did you hear the. Uh, he could. She's getting. She's just. I can't believe it's going on. You need to let me filibuster. What are you doing yeah. here? Here we yeah. go. The point has to be performance in terms of what a president does. A right, president but this, but, who but incites an insurrection against the Capitol. This. No, but I, I got the point that you're making about a one and a half hour debate tonight. I'm talking about three and a half years of performance in work that has been ex- historic. But Whether is that it be the man, the man who we the saw on the guy, stage the other tonight? Guy, is that the, the other person guy you see on the in debate meetings every stage, day? The person that you saw on the debate stage that has, for the, the last three and a half years, up until today. Ooh! Oh! 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 That's oh! A, oh! That's, <laughs> wow! <laughs> There's the qualifier. Oh! Oh! Oh, up until today, I mean, it was great. Steve Roach was, and and Whoa. and this this is a this is a solid point. Yeah, more yeah. important. And and you read it to me, and I just happened to go to it. Right, I was I was going because everything I've down I put everything on Twitter so I can organize all the audio cuts mm-hmm. because there's so many. More important than all the negative Biden is that Trump became normalized tonight. TDS took a major hit tonight, making it harder for anyone to beat Trump. Obama was right. You can't imagine how much Biden can f things up <laughs> it's it's and and there you have it uh some great thoughts from steven thank you but it's it, it it is uh on both points uh tds uh is further depleted trump derangement syndrome uh the the january 6th thing is much smaller election denial thing that's okay that's over that's gone that's not even it's over um it's over. I think what you heard from Kamala Harris right there with Anderson Cooper was the frustration, basically, and through that frustration, really the acknowledgement of what Anderson Cooper was addressing in his questions. She was not happy that Biden couldn't perform and bring that out in Trump and on abortion January 6th. And she's mad that Biden could, couldn't get it done. When's the last time you heard, by the way, when's the last time you heard Kamala Harris that, that passionate? It was when she was in the Senate. She's mad. She's angry at her boss. I guarantee you right now, she's just and was then and has been all night furious that he wasn't able to point out it's exactly what Anderson Cooper, what all of us see. He doesn't have the ability. It's over. It's over. Those are the points. They're talking points. She just went over them. And what you heard there is her frustration that Joe Biden couldn't get those points across. The Germans have bombed Pearl Harbor. There you go. By the way, we understand that just because everybody always. We know it was the French. I mean, yes. Yes. That's from Animal House, just so people know. Exactly. That's relating to the it's over. Right. We understand that the Germans did not bomb Pearl Harbor. We know it was France. Yes. We know it was Canada. Or we know who, we know the real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always get the email. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? <laughs> not only did you have it wrong with the joke, you had it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we know. Eight six six ninety red eye. Brought to you by FPPF, Fuel Power Max. Surviving and thriving as an owner-operator has just as much to do with managing costs as it does with generating revenue. Understanding basic principles of operating costs can save you thousands of dollars a year. Costs are not the same each month. If 9,600 miles are driven one month and 10,000 miles the next, two different sets of costs apply for each month. For example, if your tractor payment is $1,850 per month and you drive 9,600 miles in the month, your tractor payment is costing you 19.3 cents per mile. Drive 10,000 miles, though, and that same payment will cost you 18.5 cents per mile. This is one of your major fixed costs while paying off a truck loan. The difference in this example is only a fraction of a cent, which may seem like small change, but it ultimately amounts to $960 more annually on the bottom line. 
because though fixed costs do not go down over time, you can reduce your cost per mile with more paid miles. Owner Operator Business 101 is provided by Overdrive's Partners in Business program. Go to overdriveonline.com to the Partners in Business section of the website for more details on this and many other topics. Brought to you by Shell Rotella, with advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. I'm telling you, it's just getting brutal on uh, on social media. This was actually during the debate, uh, and uh, Russell Brand, the comedian, tweeted this. And he used to be on the far left. Yeah. And he's probably still on the left, but there's a t- he's probably more old school left than he is w- the insanity going on now. But he says, we're 17 minutes in and Joe Biden is discussing the problem of people being raped by their brothers and sisters, which is quite an extraordinary yet niche topic to discuss. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, brutal. Links to everything Red Eye on the website, redeyeradioshow.com. It's Red Eye Radio. Uh, He is Eric Hurley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. You know, I was just going through, uh, uh, by the way, download our Red Eye Radio app today, and you can listen when and where you want if you can't listen live overnight. Mm Mm-hmm. The, uh, just uh, uh, looking at, at different headlines here, just going to Real Clear Politics, where they play, or where they play, they they list all different editorials and op-ed pieces around the country. So you right. get left and, and right, and it's a great reference if you want to see what the left's thinking on a particular day uh, or what the, the right is thinking. But I, I'm going through, and we read some of the headlines already. Ones, for example, Biden stumbles amid fierce attacks from Trump from the L.A. Times. Dems and media freak out over debate. Uh, Biden is toast. Uh, the Politico, a fumbling performance in a panicking party. New York Times, uh, congressional Democrats in a state of uh, out of shock after debate win, pondering uh, pondering Trump's first 100 days. Uh, will unprecedented debate shake up the White House race? This is the one that I got, the, the one I loved. Mm. Uh, and, and by the way, that was the because I was trying to figure out which was before the debate and which was after the debate. The one will unprecedented debate shake up the White House race that was before. How Biden can trounce Trump. And I went, oh, that definitely was before. But I had to check it just to make sure. Yeah. I had to make it to see, okay, is somebody, is there going to be a backlash from the left to all this negativity? We told you what the former South Carolina representative, uh, Bakari Sellers, uh, was uh, writing. I think, was he, did he have a show on MSNBC or CNN at one time, I think? Yeah, I, I thought he did. I, 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 I don't know if he was just a panelist or had yeah, a show. But he was saying, show. calm down, calm down. Uh, it's only one debate. Uh, there's a long time to, uh, yeah, yeah. to, to go. And it's uh-huh. like, wow. Uh-huh. wow. Yeah, by the way, it's the only debate. Tell me if Biden is still in the race that September 10th, they'll do this again. No. It ain't going to happen. It ain't well, going to happen. All right. It, you know, we have we started off the show saying, look, what we think doesn't matter because it's what the Democrats are saying and they're all panicking completely. That's what came out of the debate. Yeah, I've had a you know a few people want to comment on. Well, Trump said this on this issue and Biden. the issues didn't matter no, last night. No, no, no. We've talked the issues all the time. Issues had nothing to do with anything last night. Nothing. No, it's it's as I said earlier this right. week, it's once the implosion happens, it's going to be about the the implosion. Yeah. It's about whether he's down because we all know where Trump stands. Yep. You know, if you're paying attention, you already know the two candidates on the issues. Right. This was can Biden. Can Biden be president? Right. Right. And and so what happens uh, from here? 
Uh, one of the things you and I like to do is put on our political consultant hats. That we don't get paid to do, by the way. We right. should. We have, because we do believe that some people are listening. Yes, we have offered our services, yeah. but Eric priced us out of the market. He Eric was up to like $40 billion. I think and it got to trillion at one point. Yeah, we started at a at a cool million a few back at about but, 10 years ago. But don't blame that. me. Biden started the whole inflation yeah, thing. Yeah, it's the inflation thing. Our services are worth more. <laughs> well, that's a line of... And that's a line of horse well, manure. I'll just say this. <laughs> the money is worth less. Yeah, okay. Very, okay. very good. Very yeah. good. I might but be worthless. As a, <laughs> and I do this on everything. I, okay, put on your political consultant hat. How would you advise the Biden campaign? I just thought of that as the music was playing as we came out of the break. And my first reaction was, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I, I would be simple. I Quit. Yeah. Well, if you were the consultant telling him, what he should do, you're not going to tell him to quit if you're his political consultant. Then I would say to myself, quit. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the only I, thing is, I, 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 there is, because just as you, where you started, there is nothing you can say aside from the obvious, which is quit. And, and, and Biden's not going to do that. You can't, as you rightly point out, you can't say that to him. So what do you say? It's Shane Gillis in his latest stand up special on Netflix makes a couple of points about Biden. And he says, you know, it's like that friend that has that really, really old dog that walks into the room and everyone just kind of winces and goes, oh, yeah, there he is. Uh, yeah. Mm. And, 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 you know, the dog is struggling. And basically, it's, you know, that's when you see him face to face. It's like, uh, great, great job, Mr. President. Great, great, great job. Yeah, uh, great job. There's no way, there's no way to sugarcoat it. There's no way to change reality here. Just as with the issues, reality now is on at everyone's feet on his cognitive issues. We've been talking about on the issues, the border, inflation, everything else. Reality is what's working against the Democrats. And the reality of what is going on with Joe Biden and his abilities is now, it's not up for debate because they're scrambling. The story right now is not Donald Trump. After the debate, think about that. Dana Bash, Jake, Jake Tapper, CNN, liberal media, everywhere. And it is not about Donald Trump. Now, the, one, of, one of the reasons that, uh, that uh, Trump is doing so well is because of Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, what if Biden does drop out? I think the other day I was thinking of this when I was uh, reading the transcript of uh, Newsom's State of the State Address, mm -hmm. where he's blaming California problems on Republicans and conservatives, yeah. and then started talking about, you know, na his State of the Union basically had a na national uh, flavor to it. And I went, you know, because, yeah. like, I mean, it was delusional, right? but it was still, it had that, and I went, okay, he's the one, if Biden, if he, if, if Biden fails, he's still the one they're looking at irrespective of the in him in the polling shows he polls worse than Kamala Harris. They just view him as the young kind of guy. They don't want Kamala Harris, and they just believe that that uh, the slick-haired Pat Riley late 1980s look is, uh, you know, and, and the way that he talks and him being younger is what they need. They don't need a Kamala Harris. They need him. Now, how you get to that point, I don't know, because Biden has to – say, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore, and his family has to say, I'm not going to do it. Nobody sees that happen. Nobody really sees that happening. Could it? Yes. And if it's Newsom, that creates a ton of different problems because you're no longer running against Biden. By the you're way, you're running against California, though. They had that opportunity to have Biden voluntarily step down. But how do you do that now? 
and also have him remain president. He's not running again because what everybody saw. Yeah. Because it's it's not like he has cancer. You know, right? you, you're going to have to come yeah. up with something else. Yeah, it's not like he has cancer and can, you know, that, that he may have to undergo chemotherapy. Right. But he still has his full faculties. Right. The reason I, I, I'm still right. capable of running the country, but right. but I I am going to pass the torch, and it's but that's we're we're past that point now. So if he comes out and he he comes out and says I'm stepping down, everybody knows why he's stepping down. And the next question is who's running the country until January twentieth? Right. And the screaming will happen then from Republicans. Yep. Because, look, the, it was out there yesterday. You have, this is something we've said, you have 10 to 15 minutes to make that decision of how to retaliate mm-hmm. with intercontinental ballistic missiles. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. that may be, uh, you know, my Cold War mentality, mm-hmm. but when you talk about the security of the nation, that's what been one of the most important things that you need in a president is the cognitive abilities to make that decision like that. And it's it, not an it, easy decision. Clearly wouldn't be no. an easy decision for somebody of sound mind. No. And it would be fully impossible for him. And now we all know that. Now everybody on the left acknowledges that. I'll say it that way. And so how do you have him step down after this debate? It could have happened before before the debate and said, you know, again, everything's fine, but I'm gonna it's time to pass the torch. After the debate, on full display now, if he steps down, it triggers the next question, who runs the country until January twentieth? Because what you're admitting is are you admitting he can't win? Or are you admitting that he can't win because of his cognitive problems? Well, or are no, you admitting and that, that he can't be president of the United exactly, States because, because of, of his polls. cognitive abilities? And, and how do you separate the two? Because the Democrats go, no, 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 no. He's he's okay to serve. He's just not okay to be president. Well, or, because, he's not okay. No, you make a great he's, point. He's okay to be president. He's not okay to run for president. If, if all the polls make any were 75 25 for Trump, you know, you could make the argument, well, you know, we don't see a win. But that's not the case. Yes, the polls are favoring Trump more and more. But the fact is, there is no way now for him to step down without him also stepping down and resigning. He would have to do both. Because Why? there is, there well, is no I'm, way. I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. At, why? Because he could do that, and you're not going to get his administration, uh, his cabinet, or anybody else to enact the 25th Amendment. No. That's not going no, to happen. No. So he can he can step down, stay president, and then have somebody else come in. Because this, these are the Democrats we're talking about. Republicans couldn't get away with that. To me, to me that's even worse because then it just becomes, it's just, it's just chaos at that point. It's it's oh yeah, it's lo- chaos. It's Lord yeah. of the Flies. Yeah. Who's got the conch? And at that point, let's say Gavin Newsom steps in because he steps out and says, "I want all my delegates to go to Gavin Newsom." If I'm Trump, I wouldn't debate him. Say, "Look, they're a complete mess. They're throwing people in. You know what I think." You know, you know uh, that I almost said Jerry Brown. You know, <laughs> you, you, you know that Governor Newsom represents. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the the push of the Democrats to uh, California eight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. The the rest of the country mm-hmm. and Newsom. It was amazing because Newsom's numbers and now the odds have gone up for Newsom. You know, being the nominee, I was just mm-hmm. looking at the odds, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but. It was amazing that Newsom polled under Kamala Harris. Right. And it does show because normally if it's hypothetical and it's a Democrat, you'd, it, they, they'd be in the 40, 50 percent margin. Yeah. You know, or 60 percent. No, that's the guy. If Newsom ran, we'd vote for him. The fact that he lost to Trump hypothetically is pretty massive. Well, and and so 
uh, you have the Sacramento Bee, and, uh, you know, Sacramento being the capital uh, of California. Uh, someone posted uh, a screenshot from the Sacramento Bee. And I'm trying to hold on a second. Robin Epley, and here's the headline, Sacramento Bee, it's time. The Democrats must replace Joe Biden with California Governor Gavin Newsom. It's an opinion piece in Sacramento Bee. And again, relevant because Sacramento is the state capital. And that's that's the chatter. That's now what you're hearing. It's almost now become all but a campaign. Get Gavin in. And no, you're right. You can't, it's, you're not going to get him to step down, but they're admitting he's not capable of running the country when they say he can't run. And that scares the hell out of me because who is? If he doesn't resign, it's, this entire thing is, is more of a mess than yep. anybody ever thought it was going to be. Eight six six ninety red eye Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. In Red Eye Radio, he's Eric Carley and I'm Gary McNamara. Just I went to National Review in their lead editorial the Biden debate debacle. All I have to do right now, we we'll, may read more later on, but uh, in the limited time we have, uh, what the first line, Democrats cannot say they weren't warned. Wow. There you have it. Um, Andrew McCarthy, a few hours ago, basically mimicking our concern here. Uh, this, was, this was a terrible night on X. This was a terrible night for the country. And Trump aside, no matter what Dems do, Biden is POTUS for the next seven months. Every enemy of the United States knows that. Perilous time. Andrew McCarthy on X. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, this is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Well... This night's going to go down in history. This election time yeah. is going to go down in in, uh, in in history. This is mind-boggling, just reading some of the headlines here mm-hmm. from across the uh, the country. New York Times, Biden struggles. ABC, Biden falters in high-stakes debate. Politico, Democrats really have no way to spin this. Washington Post, Biden struggles. Associated Press, Biden had a bad night. CNN, Biden's debate performance set off alarm bells. For Democrats, Wall Street Journal, Democrats discuss replacing Biden on the presidential ticket. L.A. Times, Biden stumbles amid fierce attacks from Trump. Fox News, Democrats concerned as sharp attacks from Trump put raspy Biden on the ropes during high stakes uh, debate. NBC, some Democrats call for Biden to step aside and throw in the towel for 2024. And USA Today, debate reinforces concerns about the president's age and uh, and future i mean in a in a matter of 90 minutes and i'll say in a matter of 30 minutes cuz it was really in the first 30 minutes this thing was done yeah I and mean, it was just it was just i mean and, it was it was the first couple of questions and it was over and and this is uh, by the way from from uh, from democrats yeah yeah and where was uh, where was the story I want to get here? Breitbart had it. Th- this is fascinating. 
Biden surrogates left CNN spin room abandoned while Trump team answered questions. This is when you have not the panel discussion. Yeah. This is when you have the the the, the different members of Congress and the Senate yeah. up there, you know, supporting and saying Biden did such a great job. Yep. You know, here's uh um here's Schumer, here's, you know, what a great job he did. What a great job. Biden surrogates left uh CNN spin room abandoned while Trump team answered questions. Yep. No surrogates for President Joe Biden appeared to be in the CNN spin room immediately following the presidential debate, prompting confusion from the press. Dozens of reporters were left waiting with only people from former President Donald Trump's camp. Daily correspondent Henry Rogers posted on X, citing MSNBC coverage. While Democrats' team was seemingly absent, endless Trump surrogates are on the spin room floor speaking to the press. MSNBC saying no Biden surrogates have come out to speak to the press yet. No one from his team. Dozens of reporters waiting. No one has showed up. They might have showed up later. I don't know. I didn't see it. Ah, oh, the one I did see, I saw, what's her name? Um, the one that's not a crazy Democrat. Mm. Uh, the former uh, senator of, uh, oh, um, uh, um, what's her name? I, oh, I got my blank here. Claire, Claire, Claire McCaskill. McCaskill. Thank Claire you. McCaskill, Thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, and, and, and by the way, she was, you know, though Trump lies, Trump lies. Uh, this was not a good performance by I, Biden. Yeah. And, and Fox News was reporting that they came out briefly and they were very close together in a group. And then, boom, they were gone. But it wasn't right after the debate, which is when it happens. That's the whole thing is that that's the transition. You go from the stage to the surrogates talking to the media. And the, and the reason they couldn't come out is obvious. And what do you say? What you, do you say you you can't say you can't say anything. By the way, this was this was pretty funny. Donald Trump Jr. tweeted this: Democrats forced Joe Biden onto their voters by rigging their primary to block real challengers, which they did exactly. But now they want to unilaterally remove Joe as their nominee after one debate. Now that sounds like a real attack on American democracy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's a that's a great point. The thing, Look at all the Democrats right now calling for him to not be the guy. He's fine. Everything is fine. Just th- ask ask his own spokesperson. Now, do I think that because you've you've seen already? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Biden, uh, uh, you know, re, you know, resigned from the campaign tomorrow. I don't see that happening. Uh, the pressure will come on when the polls if the polls start dropping in the next week, which what. Which I would expect them to do, because you have never had, ever, in in my history of covering covering uh, politics for the last forty years and everything that I remember, which is going back to the sixties. I was a kid, but I remembered it, and I studied a lot of those campaigns. Mm-hmm. I have never seen a night like we had last night. I've never seen a presidential campaign turn this quickly. It you is, know, you it, know what we always see, by the way, the next morning? Who do you think won the debate? What's that going to look like? Yeah. How's that going to shape up? Well, there's there's no way there's no way you can spin it no matter what network you went to. Watching MSNBC, I, I wonder if they... <laughs> well, the... I, I really wonder what the ratings... Now, MSNBC didn't carry the debate, did they? I don't know if they simulcast. I know Fox News did. I don't know who. I, who I know it was. On. I know. Uh, well, Fox News did. Plus, it was on. Uh, I know it was on Fox affiliates across the country and CBS affiliates too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They were carrying. I was looking at some of the local. At least in Dallas, I saw CBS and Fox was carrying it on the you know <laughs> the antenna stations. Wow. So here what? it is. What? Okay. Because I had to type that in. Hold on a second. I need to make sure this is from twenty twenty four. It is. It just, it just, well, of course it is, because this is what it says. From Politico, CNN flash poll, Trump won the debate by a two to one margin. Voters who watch Thursday night's debate say Donald Trump outperformed Joe Biden, according to a CNN flash poll. 
Yeah, wow. I saw what was like was it 67 something? 67 or, to 33. Yeah, that's what I had seen earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. 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 And the 33 are lying. If you're saying Biden <laughs> won that debate, I'm not sure where you're getting your weed. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, where are you getting your weed? Because it's got to be something special because you're delusional. This is, I have never, I have never seen a moment in American presidential politics like we had last night. No. And, and that's why uh, I just, I'm on a plane like at 1240 today. Are you sure about that? Uh, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got to I got to go see dad. I got to. You know, no, I mean, I'm mean, sure the plane's going to be ready and all that. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I yeah. see what you say. Yeah. I'm supposed to be in a plane. I have no yeah. idea whether I'll You're be on a plane or not. to be on a plane. I'm scheduled to be on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> uh I think there's only I think there's only one one flight besides but uh thank goodness I've got T-Mobile and I get free Wi-Fi. Here's Otherwise I'd be paying the 19 bucks just to see, you know, what uh what the White House is saying. Oh now, man. It, what? Yeah, no, I mean... Oh, I thought there was... <laughs> there's going to be... You're scanning, and so when you say, oh, man, I'm well, like, actually, okay, there's something else. Well, no, I, there's I something saw else. something else, but it's it's basically what the, from Politico, and it gets, it, it's part of their... What was their live coverage that's now gone into overnight because the coverage hasn't stopped because of the meltdown, but here's the headline, too, from a couple hours ago uh, in that stream that they have there, uh, that thread, that Politico. Democrats hope the debate would reset the campaign, but not like this. <laughs> Oof. But, yeah, Corrine Jean-Pierre and uh, and her co-pilot, Jack Daniels, will be there at the podium today. Uh, I don't know what you say. You call a lid? I don't know what you – does Corrine Jean-Pierre hold a – I don't know if she's scheduled to hold a yeah, I don't know press conference yeah, tomorrow. Don't know. Normally, you have to debate – you want to be out and about with all the surrogates out there. Saying, how great was it? It was so great. And well, I can guarantee the surrogates huddled afterwards. we got to figure out what we do in the media okay, in the but, morning. Well, well, no, what are we going to do? I was, I was about to say, where do you go? Good morning, America's on the phone. I'm not here. They can hear you. Well, you know what sucks, too? I'm going to be on vacation, and Sunday I've got to watch the Sunday morning news shows. I know. Oh. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> stupid Biden. <laughs> no, uh, but when it, you look at American politics, there just has never been a night it's like this, this. This is this this it, is, you know, when you um if you've ever had a an actual injury and the, and the doctor will tell you or surgery or something like that, the doctor will tell you, look, you 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 may th- think that this isn't as bad as it was going to be but it's the third day where the pain really kicks in from the injury or the surgery during recovery it's going to get worse this weekend the pain from this because it's everything we're asking it's the part it's the surrogates it's schumer it's any of them you know who doesn't have to talk on it Jamal Brown. <laughs> I'm I'm out. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm I'm uh, over here at U-Haul. Uh, but the problem is is that it's going because the residual effect exactly what we've laid out tonight. Well, we can't have him stand down. We're admitting he's not at that point he's not capable of running the country. So what do we do? And I can't go on. I can't go on TV and answer questions, but you got to go on TV. If you're Schumer, you're Senate Majority Leader, you got to be out there in the media. You're going to be in the hallways. What are you going to do? By the way, one of the best things I saw, I don't want to forget this, best lines I saw, and it was on Twitter. I can't remember who did it because I've been scanning uh, so much. And they said, after the debate, it doesn't matter who Trump picks for vice president. I went, oh, wow. Yeah. 
Right. It no, seriously. That debate was so bad for Biden. It doesn't matter. You can pick anybody. It doesn't matter right, uh, right now if Biden's in there. Uh, you know, Biden uh, Biden loses. The the thing that's going to happen here, because I think they're, they're all huddling. They're trying to figure out. They may be up right now. How do we do damage control on it? There has to be a decision made by the surrogates, oh, and we're talking yeah, we're talking yeah, about the leaders yeah, yeah. Of, of the of of the the Democratic Party, and so we're talking about Schumer, uh, we're talking about Jeffries, yeah, and we're talking about AOC, <laughs> yeah. No, but all of them are going to be questioned. You've got all these morning shows coming up. All the you know uh, tomorrow MSNBC CNN they're going to want as many guests as possible, yep. and so a decision has to be made. Either everybody goes quiet, and that's just just destroys the Democrats if they do that, because Republicans will be on pounding all day. Yep. Or they've got to they they're they're silent. They either have to make a decision. All right, this is it. We have to say that you know we need to find a new candidate, and we have to convince Trump. Or convince Trump. We got to convince Biden to uh, to drop out, or they've got to play defense and just say that was just one debate. Everything's fine. He's going to come back, kick butt. And if they do that, they're setting up a a second a second debate. Well, if they do that, that means he's going to be the nominee. Yeah, no, that's and so they so they've got to make that decision. You're going to know tomorrow. You're going to know by Monday the tone. It'll, the, be, the, it'll the, be the tone. The tone of whether the yep. Democrats want him to stay no, that's a great or point. not. It, because you've got to set it now. And this is why, and, and I agree with you, they're they're up right now. They're they're taking the Adderall that he should have taken, and they're staying up all night to get this thing done. Uh, I'm, I'm not, again, this isn't, I'm, this may sound like I'm bragging, but I, it just, it's just to put things in perspective. I've covered American politics for over 40 years now. Mm-hmm. And I've always put myself, you and I have done this, And we have fun doing it. And for most of the time, we're right. When we give advice, here's what a candidate should do. And normally, we find it pretty easy to do because it's pretty obvious. You know, for example, we've told Trump, just stick to the issues, stick to the issues, have the proper tone. Right. And he had the proper tone. And he, you know, did he deflect some issues? Yeah, but we expected him to deflect issues. You sit there, we're going to ask you this. Yeah, you know, Biden and the border, he sucks. Well, what he's doing there is actually correct. It may not be answering my question, but as we said, the debate, this debate was not about finding out where the candidates stand. Right. We already we already know where where all the candidates, uh, uh, you know, uh, stand. But in this particular in this case right now, they've got to make a decision quickly. They got to yeah. make a decision. Which direction do we go? Yeah. Where do we go on this? Because KG, uh, KJP is going to be out there. Mm-hmm. And then Biden, is he going to go underground again? Is he not going to be anywhere? Uh, well, look, uh, they have Independence Day next Thursday. Does he just take a week off? I mean, does he just go to the beach for a week? He just took know. a week off. I know. I don't because there is nowhere for him to go. You can have him walking to Marine One waving. Make sure you keep the media a half a mile away. I I just don't know where you go. I, yeah, and, that, you know, and that's the thing. Tonight, I don't, for, the, for the first time in my life, if I'm a political consultant, I don't know what to tell Biden. Tonight, he went to Waffle House after in Atlanta after the debate, and the people sitting there were going, you could tell the look on their eye was like, what's he doing here? I mean, I know it's Waffle House, but they, they were all looking around because it's, you know, it's a working class kind of thing. And he walks in, and it was weird. It was really strange because in that setting, especially after a debate, you would think the people in there would go, hey, you know, yeah, you know, and they stand up and, and it was like everybody was like, mm. oh, they brought him here, did they? It was not good. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. 
You know, the uh, one thing, and just to, we'll get back on track, but just one thing that I that, that I noticed, and I love the uh, the the <laughs> some acquaintances I have on Facebook, and you know, you you had mentioned uh, uh, the the John Stewart, where John Stewart said, "This is is this where we've been?" And it shows both Biden and yeah, Trump, yeah. and this whole thing that I saw, and it's the populist. Well, I don't know if it's the populist because I don't know where the populists stand right now. But the people that say both candidates, I can't believe America has yeah. sunk to this, yeah. as if Obama was a great president, right? You know, or yeah, or you just go down, you know, go down through, you know, the different presidents out there and some of the stupid things that they have done. That well, this is the worst ever. Not, as we said about Trump, name me a radical position that Trump holds, right? Right. Tell me a radical position that he holds. A position that is not in the mainstream of American thought over the last half century. You can't. No. no. Even though I disagree with him on, on some things, tariffs and things like that, for example, tariffs have always been in the mainstream of American political discourse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you look at Biden. A man can be a woman because a man says so. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to go past that. Nope. We, know, we know everything else. Open borders is good. And if you don't agree with the man, we'll send the Department of Justice after you. Exactly. That's all you have to. That's all you've got to do. I mean, the, the opinions they hold are crazy. But I just love how that always goes on. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I don't like both of them, and I'm virtue signaling because we can do better. No. Yeah. Tell me who's done better. Right. Who's it? You know who's yeah. Where's your unicorn? Yeah, who's, who's your pre- show, and show me way, that unicorn? By the way, everyone that's saying that is on the left. Yeah, everybody that I know is on the left. Mm. I mean, you may have some never. Tr- oh, mm. what are the never Trumpers saying? Kissinger, for example, I am voting for Biden just two days ago. Did he did he tweet? Oh, I got to. Oh, we got to check this out. Yeah, I guess we got to find that. What's Bill Crystal? What's he doing? That's good. <laughs> I guess you do what. uh you hang out with KJP and do some drinking? I don't know. You hide? Wow. I don't know what you do. <laughs> that virtue signaling isn't working, is it? Listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome and good morning. Thanks so much for uh, being here this morning. Download our Red Eye Radio app today, and you can listen when and where you want. If you can't listen live overnight, I'm telling you, I can't. I haven't even eaten my snack yet. Yeah, I haven't even looked at you know to uh, you know have a cup of coffee or anything because i'm just it things are just moving so quickly here there's so much analysis and all of it all of the the analysis we've been playing the vast majority of it has been from democrats mm-hmm. i want to go to news nation here in chris uh, cuomo all right all right what he had to say after the debate last night about whether you know uh biden will get out and the entire thing about, well, this was all the plan of, and, and I've read this from people on the right saying, well, this has always been the plan. Uh, this is Obama and Clinton and uh, the rest of the, the, uh, the, the, the DNC. The Pentaveret. The, the, the Pentaveret. The Rothschilds. And, and, uh, and they, they set this up because they needed Biden to self-destruct. Biden set the yeah. time of this. Yeah. It was his campaign that did it. Yeah. Uh, and I got a bunch of, you know, people yesterday. So is Obama running his campaign or is Obama running the white house? No, Obama is not running the white house. Uh, that's also inaccurate. Right. Uh, I know people love the conspiracy theory. Well, uh, to be clear, Obama didn't run the white house when Obama was running the The white White house. House. Yeah. He didn't like the gig. As, uh, Chris, uh, Matthew said many times, Yeah. but, uh, here's uh, Cuomo on, uh, the situation. Put that to the side. Biden's an open question. Is it true? You'll hear some people tonight saying, you know, I've heard the Democrats are looking, waiting for tonight. I think that's all BS. I've never heard anybody that bundles money for the DNC. And they are the people who know. 
okay? Mm -hmm. They are the people who say what's going to happen, that they were looking at tonight for whether or not they'll make a move on Biden. It's not going to happen. And a convention would be chaos if, if it were open. But Joe Biden has to make a decision. But that's exactly tonight. right. He yep. decides. He's got to yep. listen, and he's got to look, and he's got to talk to his wife, and he's got to think. If I really believe that Donald Trump is a danger to the American people, and you know what? That case can be made. That case can be made, especially based on what I saw tonight. Do I have to step aside because I'm clearly not going to beat him? Only Joe Biden can answer that question, and only Joe Biden can get rid of Joe Biden. And the only people who are going to do that are Jill Biden and maybe Barack and Michelle Obama. That's it. That's the only way that this could happen. But then what do you do? Let's say he does arrive at that. Right, that's what you and I were just discussing. What, what does then? he do? So he says, you know what? I don't have it anymore. I thought I did. I yeah. thought I had it. But you know, tonight, I went out there thinking I was going to have a good night. I sucked. Uh, I can't make the case to the American people. I can't connect about our needs. I can't make a case that I can deliver us to a better place. It's, it's not there. Well, then what? You go with Kamala Harris? That is a fast ticket to failure. She's the only Democrat that polls lower than Biden. Did try and go around now you got to go to an open convention, yeah. and it will be chaos. Uh, no, actually, Gavin Newsom polls. Yeah, we're gonna, I was going to say he, he didn't read further down on the poll. What, what I, you know, what I, what I love about it is, and, and uh, you know, what, you know uh, Cuomo, as they, they try to sit there, they, well, Trump clearly shows, you know, he's a danger to democracy and, all, and everything else. Yeah, yeah. And they never discuss the actual issues of where Trump would be a danger to democracy right, as to right, where, right. Uh, and, and, and by the way, we're not getting into the democracy versus <laughs> constitutional representative republic right. <laughs> tonight. Uh, but, I mean, it's always that uh, uh, Trump is a threat to democracy and Biden is not. He's going to uphold uh, the democracy in the uh -huh. case. So they've always got to throw that in, which is ridiculous, because as we've said on the issues, Trump is not a radical. No. Never been a radical. Right. All, always been in the mainstream of American politics. Yep. And uh, and the American public, I think, know it. And I think they've got to throw that out because uh, you look at Trump yesterday and, and uh, he was pretty calm i mean i you and i were worried about his tone and his tone seemed to be there even in the side by side during the debate his facial expressions were very muted and yeah. that wasn't the case in the past so it was honestly i think he knew it everybody knew it we said it yesterday it's going to be about the contrast between the two. And last night, again, I I don't know why the Biden campaign let it happen. But I, I'll tell you what I suspect. Biden said it. Biden told him. Of course, I'll debate him. Biden's not going to step down. Biden insisted on being on that d debate stage last night. And he's on the ballot. You have to get hit. And we said what they were just, what Cuomo and the others were just saying here just a moment ago uh, in that audio cut. I said it last Tuesday morning when you were out. Biden would have to be the one to decide that. And. If you get the party, you know, if they're behind the scenes begging him to step down, that's going to get out. It is an all-out implosion right now. The only thing they can do is glue it back together and try and hold it together till November 5th and then just let it go. You know, what... Uh the amazing thing is, though, and, and this you have to understand that this White House and a significant number of Democrats have been in this complete isolated bubble. Yeah. Where they have really have no idea what's going on. And I think the evidence is to to make our point or my point on it. And I'm, I know you agree on this point uh, with me is after the debate when Jill Biden was talking to him. And, you know, that was open. They knew that was going to get out. Mm -hmm. This was them celebrating with, you know, their campaign people. 
and everybody is cheering. And I want to play this audio again because it really is so telling. This is horrible when you see, and, and we posted it you know, on uh, on our uh, Twitter feed, mine uh, at uh, Geary Red Eye One, and yours is at uh, Eric Carley. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you can check it out. I mean, it's cringeworthy because Jill Biden is talking to Joe as if he's a child. You got all the answers right. Yeah. You answered every question, and here, I mean, it's absolutely cringeworthy. And this you can't say is anything but the Biden propaganda machine. Yep. This is what they think they should put out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the they even if they're in complete and total charge, they don't know how to do it. I mean, this is to me, this is actually when you take everything that happened in the debate. This is the worst moment, and it wasn't part of the debate. It right. was Jill treating him as if he's and he's smiling. Gosh, he is he is smiling as if he's Kramer in that episode where Kramer gets hit in the head Mm -hmm. and he sounds like he's special needs. Mm -hmm. The look on Kramer's face, you know, that look Mm -hmm. of just smiling and like not really being with it at all. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. The whole Mel Torme thing. Mm -hmm. It looks like he he doesn't know where he is. He's. He doesn't look like he's fully aware of what's going on. He, exactly. Exactly. And and the way she talks to him is like a is like a four year old. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Here. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? It's cringeworthy. You look at it. Are they at a eight-year-old's birthday party? Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just. And like I said, they're in a different, they're in this bubble. Little Joe, you did it. Yeah. You pinned the tail on the donkey. <laughs> it's on his nose, but you did it. And now what do we say to Joe? Happy birthday. That's what it sounds like. I know. That, to me, was the worst part of the entire night. And believe me, the debate was horrible. But that was right there when she's talking to him. You look at that, you say, my God. That that wasn't a wife talking to a husband. That was a caretaker. That was a mother talking to their seven-year-old child who got a 90 on a spelling test. 70. This is 2024. They celebrate getting a 70 in liberal schools now. So, Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You and I would have been sent to summer school for a 70 <laughs> on one test. But, yeah. You get a I'm trophy. sorry. I, that, see, yeah. I was... Yeah. I was wrong. I assumed that the the, the grade was important to them. <laughs> no, was, you participated in the test. You. Yay. You came to school. But she was like, you answered every question and you got it right. She either said right or you got the truth or I can't. Yeah. I could. The crowd was, was either you got it right. But it's she was talking to it's him like he's a just... child. I, I, and, it's bizarre. And, and she's it's, kind of shouting at him and talking slowly. Yes. <laughs> it just. And they have total control over that moment. Oh, the campaign no, is was, complete and total no, no, control no, no. over that particular moment. Not as to only what to do, do with it, that. Not only do they have control, they decided that was what they were going to do. Think yeah. about that. That's a great point. That was that moment was by design. Uh, uh, First Lady Biden, uh, do you mind uh, taking him out on stage and telling him how good he did? Oh, did you see, though, I'd, I'd play the Chris Cuomo, and uh, he also interviewed Robert Kennedy Jr. and said, Robert Kennedy Jr., have you thought about going to the Democrats and saying, hey, I'm a Democrat? <laughs> so it would be Trump against Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh-huh. Yeah. By the way, Donna Brazil also said, Mm. Former head of the DNZ mm. and uh, former DNC uh, or DNZ. What did I say? It sounded like you said Z. <laughs> I'm, 
just slurring my words. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting ready to go on vacation. <laughs> I grabbed a couple of cocktails out of the re- – a couple of beers out of the refrigerator. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the Z, of the, of the, uh, the, the DNZ, mm-hmm. the DNC – <laughs> uh, and also, wasn't she one of the cheat? Wasn't she the cheater in the debate? Yeah, the she's the one that yeah. uh, got the uh, the questions to Hillary, and you know, ahead yeah, of time. exactly. And back in twenty sixteen, she said, "No, Biden's going to be the nominee." Yeah, she said, "No, it's time. because because there's no way for that to happen." She tweeted that out yesterday. We've been hashing that out all week. There's no way for it to happen without Joe deciding he's going to step down, and Joe's not going to do that. Joe's the one who insisted on a debate. Yeah. This is really, it's going to be a really interesting, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep, wake up, and, and I'll be on my phone all the way to the airport, uh, waiting for the plane, waiting to board the plane, on the plane. Like I said, thank goodness I have T-Mobile, so I don't have to pay the 19 bucks for the Wi-Fi to Buffalo mm-hmm. on the plane. Yeah, it's going to be... and. I, I well, I'll be so into what's going on. I won't even mind that I'm on a seven thirty seven Boeing, assuming it's uh, able to you know take off this time. That you don't have, <laughs> have to a wait battery airport, problem <laughs> like last week. But it is going to it, it's it's chaotic, and the only cover they have is next week. It's Independence Day. That's not till Thursday. You got to get to the. You got to get through the Sunday morning news shows. Well, you, well forget that. You got to get through the Today Show, Good Morning America, CNN this morning, or whatever they do in the morning. Do they? They just run a one K tone and a test pattern. I don't know what they run during the mornings at CNN. Yeah. Joe Scarborough has to do something. Oh my gosh, what's that going to be like? That was the best performance I've ever seen. Barack, Barack Obama, the yeah. Joe Biden. <laughs> That's the best performance I've yeah. ever seen from Joe Biden. Yeah. Nobody's ever performed like that in a debate, ever. He's, he would be right on that. Well, that would though. be true. Yeah, that would be true. 866-90-RED-EYE. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. You know, and, and we got so much more to uh, discuss. And, and in fact, uh, a, 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 I don't know, uh, an audio cut. <laughs> well, it's Geraldo Rivera, News yeah. Nation, coming up following uh, the the top of uh, the hour. Mm-hmm. I, conclusion: We've never seen anything like this in any presidential debate or any presidential race to have no idea what's going to happen in the morning because it's going to be this weekend. It's going to start this morning. They, they're they all huddling. What are they going to do? Are you going to have half the Democrats out there saying, oh, he just had a weak night, it was a cold, and he'll come back and he'll bounce back because if they do that and that sticks, then Biden is the nominee. Yeah. Because there's nothing between now and, and then. Exactly. Because if you don't convince Joe to step down, you're not going to force him to step down. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show. From the Uniden America Studios, this is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley and I'm Gary McNamara. Let's go back and look at what some of the mainstream media had to say about the debate last night and the debacle. Uh, well, the uh, j- just the uh, well, just the debacle of Joe Biden because it was just it was bad. Here's NBC. 
One of the worst moments for Biden tonight when he lost track of what he was saying in the middle of an answer about Medicare. Making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Trump later questioning Biden's ability to respond to those questions. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Uh, just uh, amazing moments in, in, a, in, in, a, in a debate. Uh, I want to get to uh, this was the analysis of, oh my God, mm. Geraldo Rivera <laughs> on News Nation. All right. right? All right. For entertainment purposes. Right. Here, here right. we go. When President Biden stumbled, stumbled, then totally lost his train of thought and almost dropped his head in resignation, only to be saved by, the, uh, by uh, Jake Tapper asking the follow up question of, uh, of President Trump. That was a moment where I said, oh, my God, has he had a stroke? What has happened? Yeah. It was so dramatic. It was jaw dropping. And I was so I felt so badly for our president. I wanted to hug him. Why didn't someone bring him a glass of water? Didn't they have any water <laughs> there? And why, why was that microphone six miles away from his mumbling mouth and stumbling, mumbling? I mean, he, he did rally at times. He did show the true grit. Uh, that we love. He did, uh, especially speaking about his son, of course, and uh, and calling out uh, Trump as a liar. Uh, uh, I, I, I think that what happened here cannot be minimized. I, 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 I don't agree. care what party you are, but I'm 81 years old. In four years, I'm going to be in a basket someplace. Would he's eight stop, months Geraldo, older than I, that is, is stop. I It's like he's... He's, no. uh, he must have just got out of the shower. Yeah. Uh, I, or maybe he needs to go take one. Maybe take one. Uh, was it was it the New York Times that you said seemed to? Oh, he was talking about how Trump was mean to him. One of the things that, mm-hmm. and you you really can't. You're. It would be a bad. Uh, I think uh, a bad narrative that we need to have sympathy for poor Joe Biden, who is suffering from his cognitive problems. Leave him alone as president of the United States. Right. But we need to have sympathy for him and be concerned. And by the way, I do. And when we ever play an audio cut uh, about Joe Biden, you and I both dealt uh, with with uh, family members of, that have had dementia. We know what the signs are. It's not funny. It's one of the worst things that you can go through when somebody you love is slowly disappearing in front of your eyes. Mm-hmm. It's it's very painful to do it. If we ever chuckle about it, we're chuckling about the the bizarre and unbelievable gaslighting that comes from Democrats defending that there was nothing wrong with him. But think about it. One thing that was lost after last night, it can't come back again. The cheap fakes, the deep fakes, that's gone. Yeah, that's it's all over. gone. That's it's gone. You can't use it anymore. Yeah. It's gone. The American public knows, and now Democrats across the board are admitting it. Everybody was lying. Everybody in the media was lying. Corrine Jean-Pierre was lying. We knew that. Uh, any surrogate that went on and talked about the fact that, you know, he's just so, uh, we don't know what you folks are seeing because we see him behind the scenes and the energy. He just is able to outdo everybody. In fact, I'm 20 years younger than him, and I just can't keep up with him. By the way, uh, Department of Justice, you can hand over the uh, recordings now of the yeah. interview with <laughs> Biden. Uh, nobody's really even going to contest it. Uh, because no, it can't be any worse than what we saw last night. I, I, you know something? That is a totally solid point. That's meaningless now. It the is. The American public now sees it. Right. And the mainstream media has admitted it. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Merrick Garland, just to def- just to bring up something different in the morning, we're going to cooperate with members of Congress, and uh, we've decided <laughs> I'm going to hand deliver it <laughs> yeah, to and, Capitol Hill. And, and the reason is he was better in the deposition than he was in the debate. We're going to, yes, exactly. And that's, that's it. Well, I, it. It can't be, it certainly can't be any worse. You know, I, what Democrats in the administration should hope for is a, a Supreme Court ruling on immunity today because that will take the news away from the debate. Yeah. For a little bit. For a minute. Or well, uh, or or Taylor Swift comes out and endorses Robert Kennedy Jr. or something like that. I, I mean, I, but they're looking for anything else, any other kind of story. I don't know what beats this story or could take this story off the front page. Maybe immunity could because they could say, okay, mm. we can jump on this. But the fact yeah. is, as uh, who said it... Um, Oh, uh, one of the one of the liberal anchors said it. This isn't going away. This isn't like okay, this is this happened and now it's going away and we're not going to see it again. This isn't going away. It's not going anywhere because he's not going to get better. Right. It's not going to get better for him, and that's the problem that uh, they have now, which is a huge problem. And now every time that he is out, they can't use cheap fake. They can't use deep fake. And now independents know, if you weren't paying attention, all independents know that everything that they've been fed about Biden being okay is a lie. They all know it. Yeah. And, you know, oh, it was Martha Raddatz who said it's not. Let me see if I can find it. Here, she's the one that said it's not going away. Here we go. Again, it was just Joe Biden isn't responding very well. Joe Biden is taking huge pauses. That may overwhelm absolutely everything because that's not going away. We'll see that tape over and over and over. We probably already are in ads over and over and over again. Oh, uh, Trump's already had an, uh, an ad coming out. I've got to find mm-hmm. it here. Mm-hmm. The thing is, you and I, it was funny because I was playing the ad during a break, and you said, I hate that music when they do that. And I went, well, that's a Trump ad, yeah. Well, that's actually the Trump campaign yeah, ad. They need to find that, different music. That they that they put out. Yeah. Yeah, you and I disagreed with the music that they used. And, and one of the things that I want people to understand, because you and I have said this a couple of times, that we love to put on our political consultant hats, and we said we wouldn't know what advice to give to Joe Biden. And I know I'll probably get a response, well, don't give advice to Joe Biden. It's like, don't worry, they don't, they never pay attention to us anyway, but it's it's something that you and I've always done just because when a campaign's going on, you're like, okay, how would you respond? I yeah, mean, how would you respond? What would you do in this particular case? Because knowing how a Democrat would respond to any Republican, I would want to know because it's all part of the it's all part of the debate and understanding the issues. And if there's a weak spot in a Republican or a conservative talking point and we know there's a stronger talking point you can find it by how the democrats will attack them exactly yeah to our audience by the way yeah there's no there's no hope in the world of them listening to what we say now there's the one time they listened when we called them and said hey you guys should forgive a bunch of student loans and uh, (laughs) they ran with it because that'll help you get elected uh they (laughs) they there is no advice because the only advice would be quit. You know, I mean, uh, please, please, please step down. You have to convince Joe to do that. Joe's not about to do that. Joe made a campaign stop after the debate. So, no, not going to happen. Uh, just going through some of the Twitter feeds from yesterday. Chris Saliza. Yeah, uh, not a, not a Trump supporter, no, or Democrat. No. Look, this debate was a total and complete disaster for Biden. He looked old. His answers trailed off repeatedly. He was hard to understand. He would stop in mid sentence and move on to something else. I never thought he would be this bad. Stunning, stunning, truly. Well, then you've not been paying attention, right? Because this was no worse than anything that we have pointed out over the last year, is it? No, and especially with the uh, very noticeable decline in recent weeks. Yep. Border Patrol Union. (laughs) To be clear, 
we never have and never will endorse yeah, exactly. Biden. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Dana Perino, Democrats tonight are talking about replacing Biden at the convention. Brett Baer, it's a full on meltdown. Yep. No, it is. And there's nowhere to go because you're not going to get get defiant Joe on board for stepping down. You will not. It's not going to happen. And I always do have to bring golf into any conversation, correct? Oh, no. I it, I was wondering how we'd get it in. By the way, we're uh, this is our last morning. I, I think most of our audience knows we're on vacation next week, but. Uh, so after this morning, uh, we won't be back until a week from Monday. So we have to get plenty of golf in. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't hit any. It's going to be too hot next week back here. And I just got too much going on and too much family stuff in uh, New York. When I yeah. Come back. And by but, the way, our, our uh, buddy, uh, Dan Mendes, uh, yes. our WTN in Nashville are all of our listeners there. No, Dan, of course. Uh, he's going to be on with you next week. And uh, and then, again, we're back a week from Monday. Yep. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, appreciate Dan. It. Yes. It's, uh, uh, it's, by the way, it's a great, great honor to have Dan on. Yep. Uh, great talent. And we're, we're uh, very privileged to have him filling in for us. Dan, the man. Dan, the man with the plan, the man who can. Dan, the man, Levitan. You remember that? That's oh, yeah, from, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. from uh, uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but here's uh, <laughs> Trump calling out Joe Biden for lying about his golf game. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and well, by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's, he's a six handicap of all. <laughs> That's the biggest That's lie the he's biggest told tonight. Lie. He's a it's a six handicap. handicap. Of all the lies. <laughs> That's the biggest. <laughs> I got down one summer to a seven handicap. I was playing golf four or five times a week. Yeah. That's the reason I gave up the game for a while because... I it it you get to that point and either you've got it or you don't mm-hmm. and I didn't have it and I couldn't improve my score and as I've said that's where I've had the rage of a serial killer directed at myself because I could not hit a ball with a stick the way I wanted to by and the it, way and it, it was a, a very short time yeah but uh, you've got to be somebody put Biden's swing swinging a I don't know what it was. But it was such a horrible swing, and it's like, that's not a six handicap. You... I, I don't play, by the way, I don't play golf, but if I did, my score would be perfect if it were a bowling score. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, six handicap. You know, the pros hit, you know, 70, 65, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, they play different courses and the municipal courses that us humanoids actually play. Uh, but seven handicap means you probably could hit about – you know, 76, 77 consistently. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, after my lessons last year, I went out first time and, and shot a 79. But I really haven't played much because I hurt my meniscus. And then it rained. I was start. I was going to start playing this spring. We had too much rain. I could never get out and play. And now it's too hot. So I'll start up again in the fall again. But my goal is to break 90 consistently, which is a reasonable goal. I was just, you know, and, and hopefully 80, you know, once in a while. Mm. But I'd probably, even with the lessons and playing probably really good, probably won't won't ever get it down below a 12 or 13 handicap. That's mm. extremely hard. And, but the biggest reaction, you talked about how Trump's reactions, yeah. you know, weren't as animated as before. Right. They were for that when he said he was a six <laughs> handicap. Trump just went like, what the hell? Like, yeah. stop it. You were never yeah. a six handicap. Yeah. So, yeah, it's they there is nowhere to go now. No, the, there is uh, nowhere the, to go. The reality of the issues have been at the feet of the Democrats for pretty much the entire Biden administration. 
the reality of Biden's condition is now at their feet. You know, we had talked about all the issues. And then when we looked at some of the polling yesterday and we just said, wow, the one poll that showed that Americans trust Trump more and Republicans more on Social Security than Democrats. Yeah. And then the American public or excuse me, the American public in the battleground states trust, uh, excuse me, uh, believe that Trump will protect democracy more than Biden by 11 points with everything out there that they have thrown at him over the years and everything about the Democrats and the money that they're willing to spend on both those issues to favor Trump by a huge margin on democracy when that's the biggest, that's the only thing that you hear. You heard it last night. Well, obviously, by what Trump said, he's not going to protect democracy. It's not working. Nope. 866 90 Red Eye. Brought to you by Hotshot Secret. Hi, I'm Jen Loomis, a transport safety expert at JJ Keller, and I'm here to share a tip on roadside inspections. At a roadside inspection, inspectors may ask to see supporting documents. A supporting document is a document generated or received by a motor carrier in the normal course of business that can be used by law enforcement to verify a driver's logs. These documents can include bills of lading, itineraries, schedules, or equivalent documents that indicate the origin and destination of each trip. They can also include dispatch or trip records, expense receipts related to on-duty slash not driving periods, including receipts for meals, lodging, and fuel, electronic mobile communication transmitted through a fleet management system, and payroll records, settlement sheets, or equivalent documents that indicate payment to a driver. Drivers using paper logs must also keep toll receipts. Supporting documents must contain the driver's name, carrier assigned identification number or vehicle unit number that can be linked to the driver, the date, the name of the nearest city, town, or village, and the time. This tip was brought to you by J.J. Keller & Associates. Visit us at jjkeller.com. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Friday Radio. He's Eric Carly, and I'm Gary McNamara. Gavin Newsom was getting the questions yesterday as to, after the debate, are you going to run? He goes, no, 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 Biden's the nominee. In fact, we'll hear an interview we did on MSNBC. And it's amazing because I was watching the interview, and I went, what network is this on? Oh, it's MSNBC. Uh. Wow. When MSNBC sounds like this, you've got problems. Yep. And plus, I'll read a, a tweet that Michael Schellenberger put out saying, I'm hearing people talk about Gavin Newsom. He just, Michael Schellenberger, remember, lifelong Democrat, Mm -hmm. bless Newsom. But you think about it, we've often talked about the hypothetical polling of Newsom against Trump. Yeah. And he was worse than Kamala Harris. Yeah. Right. And you look at it and you go, would it be hard to campaign against Newsom? And I'm thinking, hmm, do you want to be California? Okay, that's it. Exactly. Exactly. There, there it, it is. That's it right yeah. there. On our website... RedEyeRadioShow.com. Show info with stations, podcasts, and more. Red Eye Radio. Before we get to the debate <laughs> stuff here, I was telling you, and it's getting a little warm here. My pool water temperature yesterday, yeah, 97 degrees. That's the pool water. Right. Not the outside temp, the pool water. And to be clear, nobody else has been swimming in the water, so there's no concern of anything like that's not water being in the water like algae and stuff no you know kids you know how they don't get out of the pool for hours yes yeah 
Oh no no no! I don't have that. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. You don't have that concern. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Ha- I don't have that concern with because right. you get up to that. You get up to that temperature, <laughs> and uh, you get a lot of kids swimming in the pool with all the <laughs> suntan lotion and everything else. Well, and yeah, and and the other stuff too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I the the duck still flies in my pool though. Duck still hanging. Yeah. Around. But yeah, with the, with with the things that they do in the 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 yeah. chemo the the uh, chemistry the, the offshoot of the diesel exhaust fluid that they may put into your pool urea. <laughs> P. We're talking about P. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and only when you become a pool owner <laughs> do you understand the chemistry and go, oh. So what happens is, because the chlorine breaks it all down. Yeah. But the chlorine breaks it. It doesn't sit when when any chemical gets in your pool, even the, the pee. Mm-hmm. The chlorine breaks it down into basically inert material, and that's why you use the oxidizer shock, which then, you know, zaps that all out. But it doesn't stay in that form long because yeah. chlorine breaks it down but uh we were at the ocean last year and it was on independence day and there was a group of individuals not far from where we were set up on the beach and it was getting a little bit later in the day and the i don't know if he was the dad or the uncle or i don't know but an ad- adult male said hey uh before we pack up i gotta go so i'll be right back and he went into the water, and then he came back. I didn't swim for the rest of the day. It's the ocean. It's the ocean. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even get in the water. Nope, I'm done. When you have to maintain a pool in these kind of temperatures, yeah. you are a stickler for no one peeing in your pool. Well, Do not pee I, in the pool. I had three young kids, and my three nephews lived a few houses down. And I know. I mean, I basically was the pool custodian. And for that purpose, I don't miss having a pool. <laughs> I'll say this, so 97 degrees and, you know, you got a saltwater pool. And yeah. and uh, I use a, uh, a borate solution in it, which mm-hmm. makes the chemicals last like three times as long. Yeah. I, I'll set the pool and I'm only gone for a couple of days. Right. Uh, but that that pool probably could go for three weeks. Mm. Now, if it's a hundred degrees, and you know if it circulates, yeah. you know. But if it doesn't circulate, probably ten days to two weeks before I start mm. seeing some algae because mm. it's that clean. Mm-hmm. But you need the circulation, though. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Uh, yeah but uh, yeah, it's uh, my point is it's hot. All right. Uh, right. What? Mm-hmm. Tell us. I want to hear just the headline of the dot com. Oh, the headline. You're asking yes. me. Yes. I'm oh, wait. You. Now yes. I've got to go back. Oh, yeah. No, the the on. headline on the debate. Oh. <laughs> hold on. Uh, it, it's because it was on their social media. All right. And I scrolled up from it. Mm-hmm. Hold on. I don't even have my reading glasses. Oh, on. okay. Uh, yeah. I just, I was, sorry. I was, I was not. Uh, you weren't prepared yeah, okay. to go on there. Okay, here it is. Oh, no. This, here it is, yeah. Winners and losers <laughs> from the Biden-Trump <laughs> debate. Really? Oh, my god. The gosh, Hill? Yes. Really? Really? That's winner? Yeah, they're trying to old school this debate. They're trying to make this the, you know, the because typically that's what you would have after a debate. Right. And the liberal media has to kind of do what the liberal media does. Well, let's break down the debate for you. Nope. There is nothing to talk about except Biden's performance. The fact-checking meant nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Uh, I want to play here because Gavin Newsom was getting the question. Um, he was getting the question, well, uh, are, would you replace Biden? And he said no. Then he went on went on MSNBC. And remember, the first couple of minutes they couldn't find any Democrat surrogates. Right, they weren't there. They all just it was only Trump surrogates. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're like, "Wow, this has never happened before. Nobody wants to talk." And even Newsom here, you know, 
we played Claire. No, we didn't play Claire. I'll, I'll play Claire McCaskill coming up. You know, she bashes Trump, you're a liar, democracy, blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. And uh, no, Biden wasn't good. <laughs> but here is uh, an interview. This is MSNBC. This caught me off guard because I was playing audio cuts, and I heard this, and I went, what network is this on? It's like, oh, wow, MSNBC? Okay, um, Biden's in trouble. Here yeah. we go. You were out there getting a chorus of questions about whether Biden should step down. There is panic that has set in. Uh, uh, well, there is panic that has set in among people who have watched this debate, who are Democrats, people who are strategists, and some even inside Democratic campaigns. Yeah. Do you think it's unfounded? Well, I think it's unhelpful, uh, and I think it's unnecessary. Uh, we've got to go in and got to keep our heads high. And as I say, we've got to have the back of this president. You don't turn your back because of one performance. What kind of party does that? It's been a master class. 15.6 million uh, uh, jobs. That's eight times more than the last three Republican presidents combined. The only thing the last three Republican presidents have in common is recessions. Democrats deliver. This president is delivered. We need to deliver for him at this moment. With all due respect, the more time we, 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 we start having these conversations go down these rabbit holes, it's unhelpful to our democracy, our fate and future of this country, the world. They need us right now to step up, and that's exactly what I intend to do. And, you were out and, and that's why you have a lot of Democrats wanting to run, because he was, you, you saw how, you know, crystal clear he was on his talking point. Now, is the talking point accurate? <laughs> no. Biden did not create 15 million jobs. No. The vast majority of those jobs are jobs that just returned because of COVID. Mm -hmm. They weren't created by, mm -hmm. they were just jobs coming back again. But they want that quickness and that youth to throw out distortions and lies. And that's right. why, that right. if you want to know why they want Gavin Newsom, that's why. Right. Now, the problem with Gavin Newsom is he represents California. And all Trump has to say is, well, number one, those jobs came from this. Number two, you are the governor of California. Who wants to be California? You really don't have to get into a lot of details after that. Uh, uh, but I want to get to Michael Schellenberger here, who wrote here on Twitter, mm. many Democrats want to replace Biden with California Governor Gavin Newsom. Now, remember, Schellenberger's a liberal. Yeah. Uh, he's a, a Democrat. He was part of the Twitter files. He is one of them that now has now looked at the Democratic Party and gone, my God, their policies are horrible, what mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. new Democratic Party has become. Mm -hmm. Many Democrats want to replace Biden with California Governor Gavin Newsom. Doing so would be a disaster for the nation, please consider these three key facts. Uh, Newsom's policies led directly to homelessness increasing by 31% in California, even as it decreased by 18% in the rest of the United States from 2010 to 2020. Homelessness increased another 7.5% between 2022 and 2023 in California. Number two, Newsom's policies led directly to skyrocketing crime. One out of four San Francisco residents polled say that they were victims of crimes in the last year. And 42% say they were a victim more than once. Rising crime and homelessness, high taxes, and unaffordable housing under Newsom has resulted in people fleeing the state. The state's total population declined by 573,000 thousand from its peak in 2020 i have interviewed hundreds of homeless people in california many if not most are from out of state many said they came to california so they could be paid to use hard drugs in many cases to self-medicate severe mental illnesses and many are assaulted and left to die resulting in a far higher rates of drug debt than in any other part of the nation mm. don't believe the hype Newsom is not compassionate. He only cares about himself. His policies result in grotesque cruelty. Now, understand the background of Michael Schellenberger. He has been involved in homeless organizations of yeah. getting people back on their feet. Right. And he's part of a, uh, of, of a number of programs in the northwest part of the United States mm -hmm. to help cure homelessness. And he does not agree with what the, Demo with the far left now in the Democratic Party is doing on homelessness at all. And, you know, look, if you if you look at the Gavin Newsom picture, the, the one thing that I think Gavin Newsom still doesn't understand, and he may never, or he may 
just never acknowledge it, is that he's been living in the blue bubble of California. And the big stage, when if the big stage were to become real for him, it's very different. More importantly, those calling for Biden to be replaced by Newsom, I know they're desperate, but they also don't understand. That's the blue bubble of California. Well, and that's that's what's going to happen either later today. Mm. Either the consistency is going to be there that you saw last night. Gavin Newsom was an exception. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He right. was really the exception to the rule. Right. Everyone else on the Democrat side in the media was saying, this is horrible. Right. This is absolutely horrible. Now, the point is, they either have to decide today... Because today we'll go into the weekend and the Sunday morning news shows. Are we going to say it was just a bad debate performance and continue with it? Which means then Biden, without question, is a nominee. Because once they take and go down that road, take that uh, decision uh, and go down the road with it, he's a nominee. Yep. The only way he's not the nominee is if the pressure starts today to convince him not to run. Right. And so we're going to learn a lot today and over this past over this next weekend. Well, what's going to yeah, happen? The the narrative will be will start taking shape today. And that's you're just going to have to read into what they're saying, what they're trying to say, what they're trying to promote. And as you mentioned, certainly by Monday, we're going to know where it is. The problem that they have in shaping this narrative, you know, it's one thing to talk to someone on a panel right after the debate. But the party itself and those members of the party have to be careful now about what they say. You know, Newsom playing it safe for now. Look, he's the nominee. Look, one bad debate performance. Not a big deal. Look at all the great things that are going on. And you just hold that line until it's not the line. As if this was just a debate performance and everything else has been normal before right. this point. Exactly. Which, of course, it hasn't been. Right. And mm-hmm. and and that's it. Because that's what Kamala Harris wanted you to believe. Right. Well, it's only a 90-minute debate. Nope. It's the very clear decline we've been witnessing uh, pretty much... For years now, but certainly over the last few months, it's been much worse. 86690 Red Eye. Lines open for your calls. 86690 Red Eye on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome, and uh, good morning. Is uh, is morning show on? Uh, is he on yet? I, he, I think he called in sick. Can he, uh, is he th- <laughs> God. Can you call in stupid? Oh, man. Because mm. if you can, I might try it. Let's play it one more time, okay? All right. All right, because right, this is, this is uh, just a month ago. <laughs> I think he's better than he's ever been. <laughs> Intellectually? Um, analytically, because he's been around for 50 years. And, you know, I don't know if people know this or not. Biden used to be a hothead. Sometimes that Irishman would get in front of the reasoning. Sometimes he would say things he didn't want to say. This is and and, and I don't really you know what? I don't really care. start your tape right now because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. <laughs> this is the pathological line that you get from uh, from Democrats. We had played that a month ago when he said that, and it was yeah. Just like, I mean, and and he read it just as Mika wrote it, and it's very clear <laughs> that uh, he's starting to buy it. 
And my God, what does he say this morning? Well, understand that you know we've known it for a while. The yeah. media knows they lied. Yeah, uh, he knows he's a liar. Of course, morning, Joe. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.